your money deserves better. What's up, Money Geeks, Mr. V here. Welcome to another video, guys. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about what to do with your money um, at the end of the month. So most people, they don't really have a strategy with their money. When money comes in, they just go with the flow. Or they're paying some bills here and there, whatever, whatever's left in the bank account, that's what they consider, you know, the balance of that month. And if it's positive, it's good. If it's negative, it's like, oh, what happened? They don't really have a strategy. So in today's video, I wanna show you where your money should go every single month if you are serious about managing your money you're serious about taking care of your money and really being involved as to uh, where your money goes um, this is really really good and this is gonna help you uh, keep an eye on your money and trust me when you follow this strategy you're gonna actually start seeing where I call your money drains are. What are your money drains? Which part of your finances or which part of your expenses? Where where do you really um, lose money every month that you don't really know? And this is gonna expose that to you. So um, we're, again, we're gonna cover a ton here. So um, I have uh, some of the strategies behind me here. Um, we, we're talking about um, the different stops that your money makes. So assume that you you start from point A and you're driving to a particular location. There's different stoplights on the way. You have to go right, you have to go left, and some you have to wait for a little bit. So that's this is what I'm, I'm actually giving you. So I'm giving you a blueprint, I'm giving you a route, or I'm giving you a GPS path that you're gonna, your money is supposed to follow every single month and if you're not doing it already that's okay guys it's not too late to get started you can actually start following this strategy as soon as you're done with this video before we jump into that strategy guys if you're new on the channel we talk about uh making extra money we talk about saving money we talk about investing we talk about building wealth and if that's something that really interests you guys go ahead and give that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell because youtube wants it for the algorithm right so hit that notification bell as well uh, thank you um, so let's jump into where your money should go every month so if you look uh, behind me here the title says seven places your money need to go each month so which are the places where your money needs to go each month I know you know for sure you get a salary right um, and here we identify and you get paid every month so uh, if some people if you're if you're self-employed um, this the flow might be a little bit different for you, but if you are employed and you have an employer that gives you a paycheck every month, um, this flow it's gonna fit you right away. So, the first place that your money comes in. So we're assuming that you get a salary or income. So the first place that your money needs to go uh, at the end of each month is into your retirement. So in most cases, I would advise that that money comes out even before your employer sent the other check to you. So let's say funding your 401k, if you're not really funding your 401k, you need to get going on that. If your company provides a 401k, take advantage of the match and get all that extra free dollars. Um, if you have an HSA with your employer, make sure that the money that you, you're allocated to go into that HSA, is going into the HSA. Um, make sure that money goes there. Don't let it come to you first. All that should go into um, those accounts directly from your employer. The key word that I, I want you to have at the back of your mind as we go through this is automation. Automation. This is really important. I don't know if you can see that, but I want you to think about automation as we go through this process because um, if you automate everything here, you can actually leave your house, go on vacation for a month or two and not worry about anything as long as you have money in your account or your employer still pays you you can leave and go so you don't have to worry um, because I still see people I mean in this day and age they get paper bills come to the house and they'll write a check and put it in an envelope and mail it and I'm thinking like wow okay that was okay if people did that in the 90s uh, let's say in the 80s in the 90s in early 2000s yes in 2020 you're still writing checks to pay your phone bill to pay like your utilities i don't know about you but to me that's that's not a good sign for somebody that manages their money in my opinion um i want you to be able to automate everything um you can totally do that so first money goes into your retirement account 
and I tell people try as much as possible to fund these accounts um, you can uh, you can actually put a percentage I do have a budget sheet that I created that shows you what percentage should go into that retirement account before you even start spending of the money so if you need that uh, budget sheet I'm gonna link it down in the description below so go check it out download the budget sheet um, use it. it it's I mean it's different from any other budget sheet that you would see out there um, it's not just um, my expenses for the month but it shows you where your money should be going the minute that money comes in so definitely go check out that, that budget sheet um, so the next part is the money now goes into your checking account so everybody has a checking account right um, and again back in the days or I want to say back in the days I mean three four years ago checking accounts were just uh, uh, I'll call um, a holding spot for your money so your money drops in there and you just sit there but now you have checking accounts like um, Capital One has uh, their 360 checking account that really pays a good interest rate. You get about um, maybe 0.7% on your checking account, which is ridiculous to think of. So you can put your money in a really good high heel uh, checking account. So that money goes in that checking account. And the idea is not for the money to sit in the checking account and do nothing, right? So the next place where that money lands into your checking account you already have it set up again like i said automation i want you to automate everything so you automate the process so that if you don't have an emergency fund you should move money from that checking account into that emergency fund uh, and what, it, what what's the emergency fund for you may be asking yourself um if you do have um a family um you're not sure about your job there's no guarantee about work for you um i want you to put uh, maybe just secure three to six months of your living expenses. I mean, ideally, if you can do 24 months, that's awesome. But three to six months, that's the minimum. Um, if you can do three to six months, you put in money there for your living expenses so that if if you were to lose your job, um, if you were to um, just switch uh, jobs because of some reason that you don't know, um, you are covered. And again, if anything would happen to you, um, your family would have at least six months of living expenses so that they can figure out what to do next. So that's the, the, the whole purpose behind your emergency fund. So you never know. Um, again, you can use it for even for medical emergency because you don't know you can go out to play sports or just go out to work out and stuff like that hurt yourself. Next thing you know, you need to go pull into from that emergency fund to do stuff, even though your HSA can actually help with medical stuff too. So you fund your emergency fund like i said so you, i want you to do at least um three to six months that is that is the minimum if you can do 24 months to me that is a, the best place to be um imagine that you have the uh, 24 months um worth of your living expenses saved up that's good if you lose your job you can go for two years without working that's that's a good place to be then the fourth place that that money needs to go in is what I call your dream account. Um, so your dream account, people have different names for them. So again, just think about it. Some, you, can, you want to call it your vacation account. You want to call it your car account. You want to call it your home account. So if you plan on buying a house, let's say in the next four or five years, um, you plan on buying a new car in the next four or five years, you plan on taking that wonderful vacation that you've always dreamt of to, let's say, Australia, um, maybe in the next four or five years, that is quite a, a bit amount of time for you to actually save up right so let's say you have five years to save up um, you start early you start putting money in that account so um, so your, your your emergency fund I want you to put the money in maybe in a high yield savings account right high yield savings account uh, like uh, the capital one 360 savings account which is awesome performance savings account uh, it pays about 1.7 percent and I'm gonna do a video about that coming up here so you guys can actually see um, so you put that in it, you're getting 1.7% um, on your, your, you know, your emergency fund, which is, it's not great, but it's better than any local or any um, uh, national bank that you would see. So that is a really good number because obviously it's about 0.03% that you get. So if they're giving you uh, 1.7, that's, that's okay. That's not too bad. Likewise, your dream account so like i said your dream account if you want to buy a house you want to buy a car you want to take that vacation you put the money in there and i would advise 
Um, if you know ahead of time that that trip will be coming up in five years, you can either put it in a money market account that pays uh, maybe over 2%. Um, I know Capital One has a, a good money market account um, and there's other money market accounts out there that you can actually see which one works better for you. Put that money in there um, and just let it grow. So if they're paying you 2% or maybe 2.5%, um, you put it in there and let it grow. Or if you can find a good city um, that matures in five years, that's when you need the money, you buy that city, knowing fully well that in five years when that CD matures, um, you can actually uh, get that money back. So or you find a good city that would pay, I don't know, 2.5 or 3%, you put that money into it. So um, we move on to number five. And this is now, this is the part where most people think about like, oh, um, when they talk about your monthly expenses or they talk about you managing your money, this is where most people go um, directly. So number five here is, debt payment so do you have credit card debt do you have student loan debt i want you now to now take some of that money and then you know, do your payments and again set automatic payments so that when the money comes into this checking account the money goes straight into to pay this guy so you have a date set up and the reason why i want you to do uh, automatic payment is because uh, i want you to avoid any late fees right just make the minimum payments because each one has a minimum payment so if the minimum payment is say $15 set it up so that that $15 goes out every month but if you want to pay extra you know that you're not going to incur any late fee then you can come back by yourself and schedule another payment of let's say um, $300 uh, towards your credit card or towards your student loans. So the idea is schedule your minimum payments so you avoid late fee and then come back and put the extra payment if you do have it. All right, let's move on to the next one. Um, and this is uh, number six. Now this is where your regular bills come into play. See where we started? We didn't talk about your regular bills until number six. So your regular bills is, you know, you're paying your rent or you have a mortgage, you're paying your cable, uh, utilities, your gym, your phone, your car, all that stuff falls under your regular bills. And those are the bills that you need on a daily, on a monthly basis to actually um, keep your life going. So this is where you pay all those bills. And if you can do it again, like a set, automate use automation automate everything so that way you don't have to worry so if you were to travel and be gone for a month you're not there sitting panicking that oh, who's going to write me the check or you forgot your checkbook right so that's 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 the reason why i want you to automate okay it's not just because um yeah you know i i love it but it's because it's for your own interest that way you don't have to carry a checkbook everywhere you go and you don't have to worry about writing checks and mailing them out so now we are at number six but I said there's seven places where your money needs to go uh, each month. So where is number seven on my board? I don't see it. So number seven is very important. And this doesn't apply to everybody. Um, if, you, if you're somebody that cares uh, about other people, you care about giving, you care about uh, you know taking care of people. So I want you to give to charity. It, it's either you can do, you can donate, um, to your favorite charity, um, you can tithe at your church. Um, so donate to your favorite charity, do some tithing at your church, uh, whichever way you, you wanna go about it. Um, this is, giving is very important. So um, that makes number seven. And the reason why, again, like I said, I separated it because some people don't really consider that uh, part of their money strategy, okay? So that's why it's sitting out there by itself. So again, for your average person, this is your regular flow. So you, you earn money, it goes straight into your retirement before you even see that money. Um, the money that comes in your checking account, that's the, the second stop. Um, you fund your emergency uh, fund, you, you fund your dream account, you, you, do, you, you, you pay your debt, um, and then you pay your regular bills and um, you actually give some money to charity or do some tithing at your church or whichever one that you you prefer to do to give back to your community. So that's totally up to you. So there you go guys. Again, automate your process. Make sure that all of this is scheduled so that each month that money comes in it knows exactly where to go. You putting your money to work. Um, I hope this was really helpful and I hope this kind of shows you where your money needs to go to work like a set. 
you put your money to work and not sit there and be working for your money. So that is the premise behind it. So let me know in the comment section if you do have any questions. Hey, thanks again for watching guys. If you found this useful, definitely go ahead and give this video that thumbs up. It helps us rank in YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't already guys, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and join the Money Geek community. And as always guys, stay motivated.